to another Thriving Tuesday. My name is Susanna and I'll be one of the, I'm the one of the therapists here at CWFL and today's topic will be COVID fatigue. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. Now with that being said, as mentioned, my name is Susanna um, and today's topic is COVID fatigue. Um, here is some information in case any one of you wants to go ahead and give us a call and make an appointment. Our phone number is 213-821-0800. And with that being said, we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and give just a brief background on what COVID-19 is, as most of you already know, but I'll just go ahead and keep it short and concise. So back in March of this year, 2020, the World Health Organization went ahead and declared the COVID-19 outbreak as a pandemic. Uh, what the COVID-19 is, uh, is basically, it is a virus. It is known as the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Some of the changes in progress due to the virus are predictable, such as, you know, we, we don't have an end date. We don't know when it's going to come to an end, when we can have our normalcy back. Some are still hard to fathom. For instance, the missed graduations, um, the missed weddings, canceled events, some deaths. Of course, these things are very, very hard and they are hard to understand and come to terms with. And some other things are still work in progress. For instance, the vaccine is a work in progress. Um, understanding when we will, we will be going back to work and normalcy and school is a work in progress. With that being said, any one of these factors is very hard to deal with. And it is something that you need to kind of come to terms with. Hence, during this pandemic, it is important to recognize mental COVID fatigue. And with that being said, some of the later slides will go ahead and elaborate on that topic within itself. But in the meantime, it is important to take some time for self-care and grounding. It is important to start recognizing burnout and COVID fatigue. It is going to be helpful and necessary as there are many things we do not know how will turn out to be. Now, how do you, some of you may want, be wondering, how do you recognize COVID fatigue? Well, one of the ways to recognize COVID fatigue is by recognizing the signs of burnout and asking yourself, if any one of these signs are present, do you have a little bit of more anxiety in the recent days? Do you have low morale, irritability, disengagement, exhaustion? These are all very common signs of burnout. However, it's also very important to be asking yourself, is this due to COVID or is this something I have generally been dealing with? Even then, if it is something you've generally dealt with, ask yourself, has it been a little more hypervigilant and heightened ever since the COVID fatigue and the COVID-19 started? So once again, it's really important to ask yourself to take time to recognize if any one of these symptoms are present in your life and if they've been heightened after COVID-19. Self-care during COVID fatigue. Now, um, there is really truly no one definition anyone can provide when it comes to self-care. Many of us have a different way of dealing with stressors and with stressful situations. However, I'm going to go ahead and give some of you um, a few tools to kind of practice when it comes to self-care. Taking care of yourself is very important. So it is important to incorporate yourself onto your dockets and agendas. Take self-care breaks when you see the signs. So if you see any one of these signs, anxiety, low morale, irritability, disengagement, exhaustion, please, please go ahead and take a mental health day. Distract yourself briefly for about 10 minutes with activities that increase your happiness and peace of mind. Practice these 10 minute exercises every few hours in each given day. When it comes to technology, we've been using a lot of it. So decreasing the use of technology can be good during this times, especially after so many Zoom meetings, phone meetings, phones, computers, so on and so forth. 
It is, however, a little important to possibly schedule a few reminders on a te technology form, whether that is a Apple Watch, a wristband, alarm clocks, whatever the case may be, it is important to keep up with those schedules just so you are on top of it and can access yourself as needed. Additionally, if work has been becoming a little bit more hectic in the recent times, given the fact that there's not a lot of human to human interaction as far as face to face, it's just become technology based, it is important to cultivate a positive work environment. Remind yourself, we are all in this together and it is important for us to lift one another. Positive words for teamwork, a few kudos, praises, recognitions can't be overused during this pandemic. So do me a favor and pat yourself on the back, pat a coworker on the back virtually, but do take the time to recognize one another's hard work to kind of help one another deal with this pandemic. Coping mechanisms. Now, coping mechanisms in the recent days can be altered a little bit to fit, to fit a few more needs. For instance, replace those really hard and rigid words with more so lenient and flexible words. For instance, replace I should be doing this with I can be doing this. Now, that allows for you to feel in control and to empower yourself. And when you empower yourself, you feel a little, a little bit better about yourself. You will feel a little bit more in control. Given how much in the recent times we are not in control of, it is important to incorporate anything you can in your control. So when it comes to chores, replace those harsh words. Instead of saying, I have to vacuum or clean the dishes, you can say, I can vacuum today and clean the dishes. Try this out. It is a study based um, kind of terminology and it will be very much so helpful. So do me a favor and try it out as needed. For every negative thought or statement, state two positive or hopeful statements. For instance, if you have one negative thought, this pandemic is never going to come to an end. Let's just say that's one of your thoughts. Go ahead and give yourself two positive or hopeful statements. I'm gonna remain healthy, which is a positive statement. I'm, going, I'm hopeful that this will have uh, an end date sooner than later. When feeling hopeless, remind yourself how many hurdles or discomforts you have overcome throughout your life. And take about two to three minutes for each hurdle. For instance, how many times have you dealt with a problem that, that has ended up having a positive outcome? Remind yourself those circumstances and debrief and ground yourself for about two to three minutes and remind yourself this is another hurdle and this may become another hur hurdle you deal with very well down the road. When feeling lonely, grab your phone and, and instead of texting, you may want to call instead. Calling sometimes and hearing someone's voice is a little bit more kind of face-to-face -face like rather than texting. Additionally, you can call a friend, family member. You can also connect with somebody you had been meaning to connect for a really long time, but you haven't had the chance to. Every day, do something you enjoy. This is very, very crucial and important in this time and day. Find a time to do something you enjoy every day, whether that is scheduling time to watch your favorite show, listen to your favorite music, or your favorite podcast, cooking for yourself, maybe exercising, whatever it takes for you to feel your best, incorporate that into your day-to-day -day life. This is how you prevent COVID fatigue from accelerating and kind of getting into a deeper level you do not want to get to. You want to prevent it before it gets the better of you. So doing something every day to enjoy yourself and to enjoy whatever activity you may be carrying out is rather very important. 
With that being said, we have kind of reached the end of our COVID fatigue presentation. I am open to hearing any questions, comments, any one of you may have. I do want to once again remind everyone that is here today and even colleagues, friends, coworkers, you may want to mention CWFL too. You are more than welcome to do that. We are here to be part of the helping process, guiding and supporting um, factors that is part of, first and foremost, your benefit package. And secondly, um, we want to be there for every one of you. Our phone number is 213-821-0800. Give us a call Monday through Friday, and we can kind of go ahead and schedule you to be seen with one of our therapists here at CWFL. Now I'm going to end this presentation, and I'm open to hearing any comments, questions, or concerns.